One question we could ask the readings today is how to be spiritually awakened, how to achieve spiritual awakening. In the spirituality of the Catholic Church, there you can speak of two ways of coming to faith. One way is, in a sense, conversion. And St. Augustine is the one who illustrates this way of conversion. He's from a very, very sinful life, from not being in touch with God at all, to a strong conversion, a strong coming to faith. St. Augustine, or maybe St. Paul, he fell from the horse and changed his way radically. And you might know people who changed in this way, people who maybe were doing a bad life and then they became amazing followers of the Lord. But there is a second way of conversion that is called awakening. And the one who illustrates this in the story of spirituality is Teresa of Avila, who was a nun in Spain after the Reformation in the 1550s. And for a long time, she was a nun, a cloister nun, a Carmelite nun. She would pray, go to Mass, but her heart was not there. Only when she was 40, when she was praying with the passion of Christ, she experienced this awakening The contemplation of the love of Christ on the cross brought her to tears. And that's when she was spiritually awakened. And she says that in eight years, she advanced more than in 40. Because in the next eight years after that awakening, she said that she received this gift of what they call spiritual marriage. So she was awakened spiritually. And this gives us hope because we also need to be reminded that we can fall into that trap of maybe going to Mass, being faithful, but not taking off spiritually, not receiving like a spiritual breakthrough. And that's the invitation of John the Baptist and the prophet Isaiah today. Both are figures of repentance, figures that invite us to receive the Holy Spirit. Look what John says. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So John says, look, you need to repent. You need to undergo this baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And if you do what you have to do, then the Holy Spirit will come. You will take your faith to a next level. And John the Apostle, not John the Baptist, and Andrew, they were disciples of John the Baptist. And they both received the baptism with water. And then they also received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They took faith to a next level. And look what Isaiah says, prepare the way of the Lord. He's speaking to the people of Israel that are in Babylon. They are exiled from Jerusalem. At the end of that purification, 70 years, for 70 years they were exiled. Isaiah says to them, prepare the way of the Lord. From Babylon to Jerusalem, prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain shall be made low. And then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Then God will act. If you do what you have to do, if you lower the mountains, if you fill the valleys, then the Lord will act. So both John the Baptist and Isaiah remind us that there is an aspect of conversion that comes from us. The Lord is coming, says. He's coming to get you. He's coming with his love in Christmas. But there's something you have to do. If you want, it's like marriage. You need two to get married. 
You need the yes of both and each spouse. The yes of both and each spouse needs to be complete. The self-giving of marriage remind us of the dynamic of spiritual life. God says his yes always and is stronger than our own yes. But he will not force us. He cannot do violence. We also need to say yes. We also need to be open to his grace. We need to be disposed to, to his action. And this is very mysterious. If we are not open, if we don't put our part, if we don't prepare the way, if we don't lower the mountains and fill the valleys, if we don't receive the baptism of water, then the Holy Spirit will not come. Then the glory of the Lord will not be revealed. And then we will not experience spiritual awakening like Teresa of Avila. It causes fear and tremble to know that there's a lot that is on our side. Yes, it's the primacy of grace, but also God wants to act with us and through us with our own yes. Think of so many examples of the Bible. Moses, open the sea. How? Stick your hand and put the stick and the waters will be open. And he did it and the waters were opened. But he had to put the hand. Let's multiply the bread. How? Bring me the five loaves and two fish. And there was multiplication of the bread. But there was... Someone who brought the bread and the fish. Peter walked on water, but he beat the Lord. Lord, if it is you, made me go. And he went out. So it's the two, the human initiative, but also the primacy of grace. So many times people don't advance, don't take off, don't experience spiritual awakening because maybe their wills are not open. And there might be putting hinders or things that block the divine yes in their lives. There are many of them. I highlighted three only. One is bondage to sin. Many times we don't advance because we are self-absorbed. Our will is too attached to something. You heard many times Francis of Sales speaks of a bird that wants to fly, a bird that wants to take off spiritually. And it doesn't matter if it is either attached by a chain or a small tiny rope, both will keep the bird from flying. So if your will is too attached to something, either addiction or strong bondage to sin, or maybe small attachment, an extra cup of wine every day to soothe yourself, <sighs> that may be a difficult one, or so on and so forth. It will not allow the spiritual awakening. It will prevent you from experiencing the Holy Spirit, the consolation of God. I witnessed so many times people who, they were going to Mass, praying every day, but there was something in their lives that they were not surrendering. I just witnessed a couple of months ago, this person, he was involved in a very toxic relationship and going for Mass every Sunday and even sometimes weekdays. But there was something missing. And he gave up that relationship. And after that, he took off. He started to flourish. And now he's a different person, joyful, fruitful. He did his part. And the Lord came, flooded his soul. So maybe that's a first question. Do you have any chain or any rope that is impeding, blocking the coming of Christ? 
The second thing is spiritual negligence. This is what Teresa shares. She said, I would pray, but my heart, my mind was somewhere else. I would look forward to the conversations of all those who are visiting the monastery. When I had to go and pray, that was the dreadful moment of the day. I wanted to be distracted. So yes, she was doing the things but not put in her heart. So spiritual negligence also can be an obstacle to the blockage of grace, either not putting your heart in the things of God, in your prayers, in coming at Mass, or even not being faithful, not giving time, not being consistent, not being intentional. God comes when we are faithful. Quality is essential, but quantity also. Quality would come if we get quantity. So God blesses the faithfulness. So sometimes you need to be faithful. Repeat and keep going. And then the Holy Spirit will come. And then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And a third possible obstacle or blockage to grace is the lack of desire. I find this all the time. People that are content with being where they are at. People being content with no growth, with no taking off. The plane is there in the airport, but it's okay. Let's keep it there. Maybe you come to mass on and off. Or maybe for you, church is like a Sunday thing. How much more the Lord can give you? The Bible is all the time saying much more. We await a new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth. So if we don't have that desire, it's difficult for the Lord to work in us. And this is not so easy because it's difficult to desire something you don't experience. It's like those who are watching black and white TV, they never long for a flat screen with color and whatever features your TV has. This is it, black and white. How could we think of something else? But now if you go back, you see how like black and white TV much more the flat screen, high resolution, high definition. And that's why the Word of God says, hey, there is a flat screen, color, high definition. Ask for it. Don't stay content with the black and white. So these are some of the blockages. There are many others. One is disobedience to the Holy Spirit. When we don't obey the Spirit, He doesn't come. It's the mysterious action, the mysterious marriage, the yes of God and the yes of the creature. It's like a tango dance. You need both. And God is there. But we need to be there. So at this second Sunday of Advent, I invite you to renew your hope. Isaiah says, here is your God. He comes with power. He can change you. He wants to visit you. He wants to be present in a new way. He wants to awaken us spiritually. But we need to believe that that is true. We need to open our wills, welcome him, remove any hinder to his grace, to his coming. So. Maybe one good resolution for this week is to do a profound examination of conscience. To take in a piece of paper, or if you have a spiritual journal, one week to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, where are my mountains and where are my valleys? What are the mountains I need to lower down so you can come with more power? Or what are the valleys that need to be filled in the things I am not doing, but I have to do.
to experience more the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord, is there anything that is blocking your coming? And believe that he will come. He renew Teresa. He renew Peter. He renew those who went for the baptism of John and they receive then the Holy Spirit. He renew the people of God. He took them from Babylon and he will renew us.